In a world where action sports and photography meet, there are two lights that claim the crown. The LumaCube and the Lycra. Q Graphics. Fight! Hi, this is Udi Tiroz from DIYPhotography.net and today we're pitting the two most popular action sports lights against each other. On the right corner we have the single-eyed beholder LumaCube and on the left corner we have the multiple lights, slightly smaller Lytra. Let's see how the two compare. The first thing that I want to do is I want to compare the lights. I'm going to mount them on those tripods and let's see how they compare. 10 clicks on the LumaCube bring it to maximum output. And if you look at the pattern, this is a pretty narrow pattern. We see a huge hotspot in the middle. If you're doing any action sports, this roughly fits the field of view you'd get from a GoPro. So it's a pretty focused pattern. And if this is what you need, awesome. Let's look at the Lytra. And as you can see, the angle is a little bit wider. You don't get this nasty hotspot in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and give the Lytra one point for pattern. I have the Sekonic C700. It's a great light meter. It measures both light output and several color characteristics. Let's see how the Lytra performs. Roughly one foot away from the light and I'm clicking measure. So CCT is roughly 7,241K. CRI RA is roughly 77.1. This is not bad for a light. If you go in and look how the CRI breaks down, so there is almost no red at all, but R15, which is skin color, is at 76.1, not half bad. Let's check out the LumaQ. Let's take a measurement, roughly again, one foot away from the light. And red is roughly at 21.6, and R15 is roughly at 81. Here is the weird thing. If you look at the color temperature, the Luma Cube is roughly at 10,000 K. Now, I don't know what else in nature is 10,000 K. This is not a natural light. So this is a question if you want to get better skin tones or a more natural light color. I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't give any of them any points for light quality. For continuous light, the Lytra is rated for 800 lumens, while the Luma Cube is rated for 1500 lumens. So this is almost twice as bright. And we're seeing this with the battery test, where the LumaCube lasts roughly half of what the Lytra does. There is one last thing that I want to talk about regarding to specs. The Lytra can go up to 10 meters underwater, while the LumaCube can go up to 30 meters underwater. So the LumaCube gets a point for dealing with greater depth. Let's talk a little bit about price and value. The Lytra sells for $60 and you can get a pair for $100 and this is what you'll get. You'll get the actual Lytra, a little rubber bumper, charging cable, GoPro mount, a little clip that you can attach to your clothes, um, and a little dome diffuser, and a quick guide. The LumaCube sells for $79 or you can buy a couple for $150 and you get the actual LumaCube, a quick start guide, a charging cable, and this is it. Of course, you can buy a diffuser, some gels, all the attachments, you can buy them separately. I'm gonna give the Lytra two more points, one for price and one for accessories. The Lytra and the LumaCube have a very similar controls, but they're not 100% the same. The LumaCube goes from zero to 1500 lumens in 10 stops. So you have to click it 10 times to get to maximum power. If you're not using maximum power, you have to remember which setting you are at. The Lytra goes from zero to max in three clicks. So it's low, medium, high. For me, I found this control scheme easier. I don't need this fine granularity. While the Lytra has more intuitive controls, the LumaCube has Bluetooth and a controlling app. So they're getting a point for that. Just before we started, I made two light balls. I don't know if I can call them light balls. And one of them has the LumaCube and one of them has the Lytra. So let's see how cool this is. I have a light temperature thingy here and this is minus seven Celsius. So let's see if the LumaCube can handle the chill. Oh, it's upside down. So, 
Actually, it does. Let's try the Lytra. Oh, side. And so again, I'm gonna, let's do it like this. I'm gonna see how cold it is. And minus 13. I'm not sure how come this one is colder, but you know, whatever. And I'm gonna click the Lytra. So one, two, three, and it lights up. Oh, oh my. So the Lytra, I'm gonna try it again. One, two, three. So this is interesting. So both of these lights were fully charged before we put them in the freezer. And what I'm seeing is that the Lytra is having difficulty handling the, the battery's drain because of the chill. So I don't know if this has to do with the light or with the battery not being able to withstand that much cold, but if you push it all the way, then the battery said that the light is having difficulty. Definitely a point for the LumaCube for this. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boil some water and see how the LumaCube and the Lytra perform under extremely hot water. The LumaCube goes in first. Good, now let's turn the Lytra on, it's three clicks. So this is interesting, the LumaCube just stopped working and I'm seeing bubbles coming out of it. So after 10 minutes, the water is, uh, okay, the water is uh, manageable and the Luma Cube is dead and the Lytra is still running. So Lytra gets a point. So actually now I'm seeing that the Lytra also has some uh, water in it. And I don't know how it survived, but I'm still, I'm, I'm still gonna give it a point. The final test is a drop test and we're gonna take those two and we're gonna drop them and we're gonna start low and sl slowly go up. So I'm gonna, Turn the Luma Pro on and put it on something medium. I'm gonna turn the Lytra on and put it on medium and just, I'm gonna drop the two from roughly one meter high. And they're both, they're both still working. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. Maybe this is roughly two meters. and they're still working. So you can see some scratches on both bodies, which is pretty understandable. I'm gonna try and climb this and see if maybe three, three and a half meters do something. So this is three meters. Both still running. This is as high as I can go without throwing them, which is roughly three and a half, maybe four meters. Let's see. Both still work, amazing. For the final, final test, I'm gonna throw these in the air. I'm not gonna go very high because I still wanna kinda simulate real world conditions. And I don't think anybody is gonna drop these from over, I don't know, five meters, but here we go. Oh, the one of them broke. So let's see, let's see the damage on this. So here are the two lights. The Lytra is bruised a little bit and you can expect that from dropping five meters on a hard concrete. What's interesting is that the Luma Cube is broken. So this was somewhere inside. I have no idea how it popped out, um, but, but it popped out. And um, so I guess build quality on the Lytra is better than the build quality on the Luma. Our tests are done and we want to conclude. Before we do this, hit us in the comments. Tell us which light you liked better. The LumaCube scored five points by winning the freeze test, having better water resistance, being brighter, having a decent battery, and having a Bluetooth app. The Lytra won seven points for having a better light pattern, a decent battery, having a better price and better value, having a more intuitive interface, winning the drop test, and acing the boiling water test. So for me, the Lytra is this battle's champion. It's Udi Tirosh, DIY Photography, and I'll be seeing you around. If you like some more cool movies, you can check out this one and this one, and you can subscribe to us down here.